What is up, everybody? It's Brandon Dukeman here with Will Harvey, and this is the Wealth Junkies Show. Thanks for joining us for another one of our daily episodes. But first, again, before we get started, don't forget, subscribe to our show so that you're not missing any of our daily episodes, and join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash wealth junkies. Will, let's get started. Awesome. Thanks, Brandon. Today on the show, we have Nelson Toriano. He is the CEO of Coach Nelly Toriano, which is a financial education company geared for personal trainers. Um, he's also authored a book called For the Fit But Poor Personal Trainer, a guide about how to make your money, not muscle grow. So we're really excited to have him on the show and talk more about all of that. Uh, Nelson, thanks so much for coming on. Can you just give the listeners a little bit more about your background and what got you to where you are today? Absolutely. And thank you guys for the opportunity. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Um, so again, my name is Nelson Trano. I'm based out of the San Francisco Bay Area. If you've ever been in the area, there's a difference between San Francisco and Silicon Valley. So keep going down south. I'm near the tech mecca. So the Google, the Facebook, all of that. Great so, spot. Wow. Great, great spot to be for business. Yep. And a high cost of living. Absolutely. So <laughs> that's right. what we're going to talk about. That's going to be the context. Well, hey, we're in DC. So it's, oh, it's okay. It's just, well, it's more we expensive understand. where you are, yeah. but yeah. we're not, you know, we're not in Alabama or anything like that. Oh, definitely not. No. Right. Um, so that's going to be important as we, we talk further. Um, so I'm born and raised here, went to school at University of San Francisco, I actually got a journalism degree, um, but I segued into business. I got my master's uh, in business administration um, here as well as Cal State University, East Bay. And if you're in the tech industry, you naturally fall, your, fall into the tech world. And I got found my job uh, developing websites and search engine optimization. And I was doing that for about 10, almost 11 years. Um, my side hustle, though, was teaching fitness classes and training clients individually. So I'm a certified personal trainer with the National Academy of Sports Medicine. I have an entrepreneurship certificate from Stanford University. So I was always that hybrid with my day job being in business and in tech, but my side hustle was in fitness. And wow. like many people who have that nine to five job and listeners, this may resonate with you. It came to a point I was just not fulfilled mm -hmm. and I was working and putting in the long hours. It is not uncommon in the tech world to be working 14, 16 hour days, to be honest. Um, if you have clients up in Europe, you are gonna be online very, very early. And if you have clients or uh, vendors in China or India, you're gonna be up really, really late. Yeah, you're, you're not working on normal person hours, you're working on no. overseas hours and yep. things like that. Tack on traveling, tack on the fast pace of life. Um, so the burnout in the tech world, it's real. Um, so I was in that phase around 2000, between 2010 and 2012. Um, I was thinking about making the leap and switching from something that personally I felt unfulfilling. And I had the opportunity to come up to be a program manager at one of my gyms that I was training at. And I decided to take the leap. Um, doing that in the tech world, leaving, being in the tech industry or in the hub, but leaving the industry to pursue your passion is kind of like a, a kiss of death here. Yeah, yeah. That's what it sounds <laughs> like. like blacklisted, yeah. there's no going back, basically. It, there isn't. People thought I was, some people thought really? I was nuts and how are you going to make it? And I remember interviewing and, yeah, and, and the person who was interviewing, at the gym who was interviewing me, she leaned in and she's all, you know you're going to take a pay cut, right? I mean, you're not going to earn tech money. That, that is right. blown out of proportion. And I said, I know, I, I calculated my risk. I, I know what I'm doing. I'm just going to be teaching a whole lot more. So, all right, well, we're offering you the job. Are you going to be okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, so you had so, the gold, you, you, you had kind of the proverbial golden handcuffs in the, in the tech world. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and I broke free and never looked back. Wow, um, nice. Yeah. It took me about, it took me about a year of hustling to get as many clients and as many cl classes that I needed to achieve the six figure income that I was achieving in, in, in the tech world. It took me about a year. It wasn't that bad. Um, and it was in that mindset of moving from scarcity to abundance, mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, ontological, emotional self-help work and just to see, you know, there's so many different forms of income out there. I'm going to be fine. So I was hustling. Um, and I was pretty comfortable at where I was at. Give fast forward about like two years from that point, I started looking at, I'm 38. I just turned 38 last month. So I was um, doing this for about four to five years until I started looking at who are the incoming personal trainers. And they're anywhere in the age bracket of 
21, maybe up to 26, who are also personal trainers working at these big tech companies, just like me in the same gyms. Um, super talented, super enthusiastic, very smart and compassionate and great with clients. But after the clients leave, I saw the dark side. I saw what they would, how they would behave when the clients were not on the floor anymore. Some of them would be crying. It is not uncommon to work with a client and in between sessions, because the personal training schedule is so, so uh, uh, honestly disorganized, because you could be training a client at nine o'clock, have a break from 9.45 to 10, then you're on again at 10 15, and it's just always sporadic. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon for personal trainers to be exhausted, I to bet, take naps yeah. in their cars. They'd be the first one to enter the gym, last ones to leave the gym. Um, and their mindset is in order for me to make it in this area and to have enough income, I have to be training more. I have to work more. I can do small group. I can teach more classes. I can do more, 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 but you're going to be working for more hours for more money, but you're going to be fatigued and exhausted. Right. Right. You're just or wasting your hours, hours away. You're yeah. Trade so time for money. A lot of them were stuck in how am I going to pay my student loans? Some people were moving from, you know, from the Midwest to here to Silicon Valley and they were just floored at a, a typical one bedroom apartment cost rent is for like $4,000 in San Francisco. And so that's Valley. unreal. And it's wow. like, it's practically a mortgage. It's okay. That's, it. that's, uh, I take back what I said. That is, a lot. <laughs> that's higher than DC. So it's, never mind. It's, <laughs> it's nuts here. It's nuts here. Wow. So that's it's incredible. not uncommon for, someone to relocate here do their one to two years here and then relocate to somewhere else i mean just wow. is that because that. do they move there for the the experience and to be able to say that i w was here in silicon valley mm -hmm. doing this and yep. that makes them more marketable yep okay um and you know i had clients in san francisco and it's this you feel like you're reaching the epitome of your career and there's this, 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 this prize at the end, but it's not, it's hard. It's really expensive to live here. And once the reality sinks in, um, a lot of personal trainers will realize that um, they just financially cannot make it, not without everything that's going on. Um, so I saw that and I was on the opposite side of the spectrum. I'm financially fine. And so I'm, I'm, I'm successful and I feel um, great with my work hours. So I felt like a lot of these young personal trainers Actually, I'll take a step back. I took a look at how they even got there. What's the main difference between me and them? And it really was because I, was I just about to ask that. Yeah, I don't. I don't come from a physiology, kinesiology, sports medicine background. That wasn't my degree. My degree really? was master's in business administration. Right. So my whole mindset was business. I could see that there's multiple sources of income. I could see there's different tax brackets. I could see that a possibility of entering in your own C corporation. You know? um, but if you graduate in the sciences. And you, and you pursue your master's, you're going to be stuck in that. You're going to be very book smart in the sciences. Absolutely. So you have no concept of taxes or yeah. liabilities or assets or any financial statements at all. So you don't even know how to develop your own network statement. Mm -hmm. So I felt in the fitness industry, a lot of the people that are churned out in the fitness industry are really book smart in the sciences. And you can see this in any of the certification programs. Um, their certification programs will get to the very last chapter about sales and marketing. And that's it. And then suddenly you're certified once you pass the test. So of course, personal trainers entering the industry would say, the only way that I can make more money is if I sell more and all mm -hmm. these different ways to sell more. Maybe I should be a social media influencer and I could get more clients. Well, you can, but you're also going to be servicing them too. You're right. also going to be sacrificing something too. Right. There's no scale um, in that. There isn't. And it's not sustainable, obviously. So I felt it was my social responsibility and my unique opportunity to take my voice and actually develop a book to supplement all the available resources that is available about sales and marketing, which in my experience, it's a lot, almost ad nauseum of how to get a client. You can mm -hmm. use any channel. So my book supplements all of that and goes deeper into accounting and finance. I explain the three forms of income, the four different roles per the cash flow quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. Mm. Um, start explaining, you know, compound interest, the business plan, how to develop a net worth statement. Oh, the four financial statements, um, three that pertain to a business and the net worth statement, which pertains to the health of the person, how to develop, how to manage your, your bad debts, good debts versus your assets. Um, and what was important to me, how to differentiate myself even further was to take those to be honest, rather boring concepts, right, right. <laughs> accounting and finance, and make it 
is speak to a personal trainer who is hands-on tactile in their mm -hmm. learning style um i mean think of this stereotypical fitness person they could be super super cardio junkie or they could be a bro with a man bun or they could be this yogi i mean they're definitely not or a meathead or a meathead yeah. They're yeah, definitely yeah. not sitting behind and like me staring at a bunch of Excel spreadsheets and actually kind of excited. Right. It, you know, <laughs> but that, that's yeah. awesome that you, that you yeah. realized that and you were basically kind of be able to repurpose the, the, not the content and put it into yeah. what they are interested in. And, exactly. And that's exactly. awesome. Cause like you said, they're not, they're not interested in looking at, you know, a textbook full of a bunch of numbers and words that doesn't relate to them. They have no idea what it's talking about, but when you put it in, exactly. in their terms, Exactly. And someone like our, ourselves, if we're, if, you know, if we're looking at a P and L or whatever, and, and mm -hmm. a, a balance sheet, um, we're, we're not going to know how to, to get it to where someone in a, in the personal training world would understand it and be able to learn it. Like you said, they're very visual and hands-on. Right. It's it, you had that unique, um, experience where you were in it so you knew how to talk to those guys exactly that's pretty cool yeah exactly so i like to pose myself that i'm bilingual so mm. i know mm, business good, i know yeah. that language and i know the fitness language and i can translate between the two so i felt that was my my unique selling point it's kind of like um and i can even go back i can explain the fitness world over into someone who's business in the personal training world since their mindset is only about sales and marketing and again ad nauseum there's so many resources about sales and marketing so when personal trainers try to segue from being an employee or even a 1099 self-employed person and they try to be a business owner like open up the gym yeah I, one i'm always surprised because they just think it's super easy to do that right. to open a brick and mortar <laughs> it's the whole <laughs> e, e myth you know yeah like uh, uh, you're legally and financially obligating yourself to do this right they just think well I, i'm a trainer i know how to you know I, I, i'm muscular i know how to get other people muscular and fit then yeah it can't exactly, be that hard exactly exactly and i have to explain to them you know how in the personal training world we have to analyze someone's squat and we have to look at your thighs and your knees and your glutes um well, in the business world, your glute is one thing. So sales and marketing in the business world is one select skill set and department mm -hmm. in any type of company. So if you're looking at opening an entire company, you're going to be trying to design the entire person, not just one select muscle group. You can't just focus on that. You have to focus on things like legal, HR compliance, service, uh, service delivery, looking at all your cash flow statements, all of them. <laughs> and yep. trending and things like that it's way more complicated so you got to focus on all the parts or you get the chicken legs you know the guys with the big arms and the big yeah, chest and then they got exactly. the chicken legs yeah. things are going to be things are going to be unbalanced and yep. according to the balance sheet if something is off there's going to be something alarming you know what i mean yeah so um that was that was my goal and so far i've been getting a lot of good reviews when um i'm reaching out to young personal trainers i after i studied the the trending um, they're the most at risk. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's student Absolutely. loans. It's again, the $4,000. Yeah. I mean, right now the rent is $4,000 and it's only going up. Right. right. And, and, <laughs> so. and like you said, those, those are the most at risk. And I, I agree with you because, yeah. you know, like you said, they, they most likely went to college and studied the, the sciences part of the yeah. job. And, you know, they think, Oh, I'm, I'm set for life. You know, I got a master's degree in, you know, kinesiology, whatever, but mm -hmm. you're not, you, you're, you're set for that aspect of life. But, the financial aspect, you know, you like you said, you're in thousands of dollars, hundred thousand dollars in debt. Exactly. And, you know, how, how are you going to recoup from that? I noticed there was a, a just a void in, and, and I personally think um, just financial education is just, it should be the norm mm -hmm. and in education and it should be offered to anybody, no matter what they study. And I've just noticed that even people who are just entering the industry, no matter what, where they came from they don't even know the simple things the difference between adjusted gross income and net income it's or crazy. adjusted uh, your, your gross revenue versus your actual net income and i asked someone like do you even know um part of your percentage of your 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 paycheck that actually goes into fica and she's like oh, what's fica I'm like oh my god it's eight percent and you're never you might not ever see it again right, <laughs> so, right. yeah exactly like these, these simple things that i think is missing education so um this is what I took upon was helping be part of the solution and filling in that void because I know ethically it, it, it needs to be out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. that, that's exactly right. I mean, I, I never, I went to college, never graduated, but even when I was, when I was going, the one 
the biggest takeaway I got from college, I learned that data is plural. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I learned that the word data is plural. So <laughs> that's kind of sad that my biggest takeaway and the biggest thing I've learned in, in today <laughs> is, is the fact that data is plural. So, but, um, but you, you know, it, a lot of the stuff that, you know, business wise stuff that I know now is a lot self-taught or, you know, I have to find the question, the answers to myself, my myself, <laughs> you know, you're not, yeah. you're not, unless you're, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're taking a business administration degree, then, mm-hmm. then you might learn it, but even then you mm-hmm. probably don't learn everything that you need to know. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, a lot of know, times that teacher go ask them how many businesses they've started and the answer is right. usually zero. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. And then, and, and even me, when I, when I was going for my graduate degree, even some topics, even I found boring. I had mm-hmm. to take this college level pricing course, which was one of the hardest financial finance courses that I ever did. Um, and even then, I mean, I zoned out a whole lot. So trying to take <laughs> <That's> <laughs> dang, funny. that class and trying to apply it to someone who's more kinesiology, physiology based, I mean, that, that, that person's not going to get it. Absolutely. Right. So I advise speaking in their language. So what are, that, that's really cool what you've, what you've done. You've kind of realized that there's a, a niche there. And you obviously, I want to get into how you, how you get paid to do all that. Um, mm-hmm. But, you, you know, you found a problem. You've created a solution that's, that's awesome. What are, what are the backing that up before we get into all that? What, I mean, how can a personal trainer scale what they're doing? What is the next step besides just working, working, working more hours like most of them do? So my, I'll explain how I did it. Um, There's going to be four, four different roles that any personal trainer can be. Um, so there's always going to be that W2, that employee, which everyone knows you're working for someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's not uncommon for personal trainers to, get, to be honest, get frustrated <laughs> with their employer. And then they start segueing into the 1099 contractor independent person. Right. Okay. Um, they usually stop there. Okay. Um, then very few, if they actually t- are proactive, they will step away from the fitness education world because really there isn't a whole lot of this next one I'm going to mention is that they start taking accounting classes. They start taking books about the business mindset. They start looking and, and reading up on um, not just sales and marketing, but how to develop an actual business. Mm. So they segue into the business owner world where they can hire people. When you're self-employed, you're going to be totally self-reliant. But when you're a business owner, that's when you start seeing if I develop that S core, that C core, I get more tax deductions. I can actually write off all of these expenses that are applicable to hiring the employee, like their, like right. their insurance and things like that. So that's when they start analyzing the financial statements. Um, then, hopefully, um, either the self-employed or the business owner will take on the fourth role, which is the investor. And so they go through they the see- quadrants. That's the exactly okay. exactly. The Robert so, Kiyosaki quadrants. Perfect. Yep. yep. And, and a lot of it, it takes that framework, which is, it makes sense that if, an, if a personal trainer was truly an investor, but still within the fitness world, they would be investing in things like Nike, mm-hmm. Lemon. And if they saw uh, the trending of Planet Fitness, I know on social media, every fitness person kind of rags on Planet, fit, <laughs> on fit, Planet it's Fitness. A $10 gym membership. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the... It's, it, 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 it uh, catches the catches. They were trading about 10 to $15 about like four years ago or something. I can't remember what, but I remember the trajectory is, I think it's about 30, 40, even higher nowadays. Oh. I mean, so they themselves as an entity, um, they really solidified their niche mm-hmm. in the market. Um, you don't have, obviously you don't have to be a personal trainer to buy that stock, but if personal trainers could see that there's multiple sources of income. If you move from the different quadrants, which I did, and started supplementing all your income from the W-2 and start branching off into other passive sources of income, um, start developing your portfolio, then you would be at a faster rate of accumulating wealth. Um, so first steps first, personal trainers. Um, they ought to not be so attached that all the education has to be within the fitness world. Mm-hmm. You need to start looking at education. If you want to start developing wealth, start reading up on how to accumulate wealth. That's going to be mm-hmm. looking at uh, reading and getting education on taxes. Understand how actual, if you want more money, study money. You know, <laughs> if you want to start investments, study investments. Yeah. If you want to be a great social media influencer, study that topic. But at the end of the day, what you actually want is money and wealth. So understand how it could actually be just created. You know? 
and understand that concept. Then you start moving your mindset to abundance. The actual action steps are going to open up to you once you start seeing the benefits of opening up your own business, of going through the legal steps and, um, and the trademark and the copyrights and all of that. But then you understand you can license your logo. Here's your passive income. Mm -hmm. The three, um, form, the three uh, forms of income, you're going to understand the difference between ordinary earned, which sucks honest right. <laughs> you, get, you get taxed anywhere between 30 yeah, up to 40 you get killed exactly right? right but you will understand how portfolio income gets taxed then you understand dividends and how um, passive income gets taxed then you start seeing the light things start clicking off and yeah. you start to see personal trainers start seeing wow i don't have to be hands-on and on site all the time yeah and there, i could do more and more and more i'm like yeah, yeah that, that was going to be one of my questions was do you see that aha moment in, in the in your clients that are like holy shit i didn't even know this existed no a, a hand, handful of yeah. them yeah um one of them uh, straight up <laughs> actually i'm gonna he actually just left one of the on one of our gyms and he one he re, he moved from south side of chicago to atlanta to here and realized oh my god the cost of living is high i'm like oh, yeah. <laughs> and now he moved down south and he is still a personal trainer he's still a coach um but his side hustle is um wholesaling real estate so he and his wow. are opening it. Yeah. And I was like, That's you know, awesome. that I'm, I'm going to be doing that too also. And so he saw the light also after reading my book and he said, there is actually someone in the fitness industry who actually understands investments. I always thought investments was something that I ought to do, but no one explains it to me beyond the 401k. Like, yeah, more information. Right. Needs to be out yeah. There. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I 100% agree. You're, all you're yeah. doing is the 401k. You're, you're missing the boat. I mean, I exactly. Exactly. I cash uh, mine in and I, I love that a waste of time. <laughs> My yeah. Um, yeah. wow. So, that, that's really, that's really cool. Brandon, you were about to say something. No, I, I just, I, I love, I love that you're, you're attacking the, the younger fit personal fitness trainers or not the personal fitness, you're just the, the, the trainers and, and educating them because like you said, nobody's educated about it. And, no, you know, and, and that's kind of our goal, you know, not necessarily educate everybody about, you know, those types of things. But, you know, if you open the eyes to somebody, you know, you're making a difference. And exactly, exactly. I think that's, that's huge. And, and that's so, you, so you see that a lot of guys are in the E quadrant. That's the employee quadrant. That's where they're mm -hmm. starting. And mm -hmm. maybe they get to the, um, to the, what is it? The S the self-employed one. Mm -hmm. So maybe they get to the self-employed. I think they, the, the four goes, the first one is you have a job, then you own a job. And then mm -hmm. the businesses, you own a set of systems and processes. Mm -hmm. And I forget what the I is. But basically, they go from having a job to owning a job, but they don't yep. break through beyond that. Exactly. What, what, do, you, I, what do you attribute that to? Um, again, that lack of education. But I also think it's that lack of mindset where, and especially once you start working within these employers, and even if you're self-employed also, um, it's constantly reinforced through, through, gosh, any, any type of social media that um, the message is if, if you want to look like me, and you can see this on social media, if you want this type of body, if you want this six pack, if you want to be flexible or anything, just ask me and let's do a consultation. Let's do, uh, I'll sell ten, five sessions and 10 sessions. It's a lot of sales. So even that thought process of how are other personal trainers being successful? How are they sustaining? It's always going to be selling to consumers. It's always a B2C model. But what you don't see on social media and what a lot of people don't think about is, a, is there is possibility of you being a B2B model or being a social media influencer and investing or because those type of concepts, they're not glamorous. It won't get you a lot of followers. Like no one's going to follow me because I license my logo to you know, a branding company or something like that. I can't really right. talk about it. But what I can talk about is show off my body and say like, this is how you get a six pack. So it's this constant well, first, it's that lack of education, but the constant reinforcement that other topics about business are not as important as sales and marketing. So no one is actually saying that, you know, even from the get-go, and I see this all the time with when people um, are segueing into self-employed, they're not even setting up themselves up correctly. So they are, um, they're selling services, uh, but without any signed contracts. They're not, they're doing all cash handling, but they won't even set up their QuickBooks. Um, they so they're are, really unorganized. Yeah. 
So they have no asset protection at all. So I know a lot of personal trainers when it's like, yeah, you could just pay me like a hundred bucks per session and then I'll just train for, you know, for whatever that and you can just pay me via check. And I always look at them like, Did, was there a service agreement? Are, you, are they hiring uh, you as a person? <laughs> like, you know, you're... See, I, I've been in that same boat, not as a personal trainer, but I've, mm -hmm. I've worked with somebody when, when I was getting ready for, for college and I was working with somebody the same way, you know, we, I paid, you know, wrote a check to him and, you know, he'd be like, Hey, what, what session are you on? What, what is it? I mean, just yeah. completely the same way. A great dude, but just, it just, when you said that, it right. reminded me of him and I was just, it, it, I was like, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's a sign of professionalism and it's a mm, sign that you're exactly. expanding from an employee to an actual business person. You are right. handling yourself as your own brand, as your own company. You didn't even set yourself up as an LLC. So you're putting your, you and your family and your assets at risk. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's crazy to think about and, and us sitting here, you know, I have multiple LLCs for different things and I'm sure you do yeah. too. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easy to, to, to say that, but these, like you said, these guys just have zero, they have zero knowledge. They've, no one's ever told them what an LLC mm -hmm. even is or what the purpose of it is. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's, it's almost like you can't, you can't really fault them. And that's, that's yeah. where you come in. <laughs> yeah. And so I explain it, explain it to their language and I'm saying, this is, this is designed to protect you. This is designed to yeah. actually help you. Because uh, I want you to be successful. I want any personal trainer to have that lucrative career and not mm -hmm. feel that burnout and not feel discouraged. Um, but we have to take it back to the basics. What are you passionate about? And even if you choose a career, let's say that you don't want to train one-on-one, -on -one, if you really want to take that social media influencer, which is a legit career nowadays, I, I, yeah, I, I, I tell people, I, I, tell young, I tell young people, I, I kind of age myself with this. Back in my day, we did, <laughs> there, was, there was no such thing as Instagram. I mean, right. we were still trying to transition from, <laughs> from MySpace to the early stages of Facebook. <laughs> and so. You guys had um, the Motorola razors. Yeah, we had flip phones. Right. And, oh, God, it was, <laughs> it was good times. Though. I, just, um, yeah, I had a, I had yeah, a razor. I was going to say, the razor was the cool phone. You had, you, yeah, you had to have exactly. the razor to be cool. We had, that, right. we had the sidekick also. Yeah. That was, That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, 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 I admire a lot of entrepreneurs who are younger than me because they have so many more opportunities to brand themselves and that the, the, um, barrier to entry into entrepreneurship and business ownership has lowered by far. It's so true. So, I mean, it would behoove them to not become a business person and not understand who they are and their unique voice. Yeah, let's work together. Let's make sure that you're all set up and you understand what, how to read your money in order to be successful because you have a unique opportunity. So, so how, how do you, how do you, um, how do you get paid for, for your services? I do speaking engagements. So I got okay. one at a local university here. Um, as I start getting more and more, uh, uh, start booking more and more speaking engagements, I do, um, online, uh, online packages for, uh, webinars also. Um, I'm in the process of solidifying my self-study course. So after you read the book and you take a certification exam. I'm in the process of doing a self-study course and have that certification be applicable for the National Academy of Sports Medicine and other no certified providers. So oh, I'm in the awesome. process of doing that. Um, obviously, book sales. So if you're interested in the book, listeners, it's going to be available in paperback, um, ebook, as well as Audible. And then eventually I'm going to do like a hands-on, in-person, larger scale courses. That's really cool. So, so, so when you're doing your that. speaking engagements, you said you had one at a university. Is it, what's the crowd that you, that you're, you're gearing it to? Is it, is it the sciences, the, you know, the kinesiology group, the, the ones that are trying to be uh, trainers or is it just yes. a broad come out and listen to what I have to say? For now, it's going to be the previous. So okay. a lot of people in the sports medicine, uh, kinesiology, physiology, that, that type of department, um, it was interesting when I first started because I was reaching out to a lot of the career development people in those departments and mm -hmm. a lot of professors, and I was rejected a lot. I uh, they were saying, you know, this isn't applicable to me, I, I, and, you know, good luck. I, I, you really should be going to a personal training department or yeah. uh, going to the business school. And I said, well, I'm going to be preaching to the choir. So exactly. <laughs> your, it's actually your students who are graduating and entering the workforce who are quitting and the first, <laughs> yeah, so there's there's a disconnect, and and I think everyone is responsible in this entire ecosystem of trying to get this person be one financially stable, but two happy in their career. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people quit; yeah. they 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 miss it, they long it, and so 
I've known a bunch of personal trainers suddenly segueing into a totally different avenue. And I was like, you must, you must still love fitness. You must still love exercise. And they do. You know? and, and it sucks to be stuck in a career not being able to make it, but you love your career so much. Yeah, so right. That's so sucks. true. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm still stuck on it. I, I think it's such a great thing. And it just... Mm-hmm. So I know you said you're working on getting that certification to be, I say the the yeah. professional NASM title of it. Yes, yes. So every personal trainer, in order to get your certificate, and in order to maintain your certificate, you have to keep getting continuation education units mm-hmm. for every two years or every three years, depending on your provider. Um, in order to obtain those units, you have to constantly educate yourself by taking their approved courses. Okay. So I'm in the process of being one of those approved providers where you can go to me, I'll supply you the credits as long as I get to educate you in terms of finance, and then you get to keep your certification. That's awesome. So how, how yeah. is that a difficult thing to get certified, to have a course that's certified? or? Uh, depending, depending on the organization, because each one, like some of them don't offer it for self-study courses, but some of them do offer it. Uh, some of them will give you different hours and they'll judge it. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if this is going to take three hours or the course, maybe it's five higher number of units, the more that you can charge that person, obviously. And, and then there's going to be some organization that says, you know, I, I don't think business is going to be relevant for our type of, uh, uh, personal trainers, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> but so there are going to be providers that say we strictly want to just stick with the sciences. Okay. Yeah. Got it. What, well, what's your, um, so moving forward, what are some things beyond, uh, beyond that that you have on the horizon and what's, what's kind of your, your end vision? Um, my ultimate goal is to significantly make a difference in the fitness industry at a larger scale. And I would love my book and my education products to be standard, um, in the universities. Mm, one of my awesome. first milestones is to get the book as required reading in their internship classes you know undergraduates they have to take that one internship or that mm-hmm. the real course whatever uh, real world type of course uh, right. their last semester or quarter before they graduate i would love to get that as required reading have that on the books and give them give it to them before they actually leave the university that, that's makes, a great goal makes yeah. perfect sense as to why why they would do that mm-hmm. but but you know they don't teach anything else to, to yeah. kids anywhere about how to get out in the real world and exactly um, exactly about credit score or anything like that. I mean, they'll, there's none of that. So that, yeah, I mean, even adults. I mean, I say adult. Everybody's technically an adult after 18. But but even you know, people have been doing their job for 20, 30 years. They still don't know half of this stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, and you know, that's, yeah. you got to attack them young to to ch- make a difference. Make a, I mean, make a huge difference. Yeah. That's right. Part of, part of the, my education, part of the book also, um, and I try, try to go into a micro level as well, but also at a macro level. So I go to I explain to them on broader level what the GDP is, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> and how it affects your dollar, explain the inflation rate. Right. Um, and especially with the younger audience, they have no concept of how inflation works. They just know prices are going up and they know they have a student debt and they know they have cost of living and things like that. So I even go as far as explaining the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. And I explained, you know, in 2025, well, right now, uh, we're technically at a sale where, you know, one of our lowest uh, tax brackets for federal income, right? But that act is going to expire by the end of 2025. So young people, you have to be planning for your um, tax bracket to be increased by 3 to 4% by 2026. Mm. It's going to impact how you live. It's going to impact uh, where you work. It's going to impact how well you can pay off your student loan. Um, so yeah, I mean, there is a time, time frame we have to work with them. Yeah. So what, what, I mean, what, what's an example of something that you would tell someone in terms of, uh, the tax bracket going up in, uh, in a few years, like open up Roth IRA or something like that. Open up a Roth IRA, really take a look at, um, the stock market and, and real estate. I mean, have your, have your retirement plan. They're really at this point, like, <laughs> you, it should be, it, in my opinion, it should be common knowledge that you have some type of investments to hedge your risk that if something happens, let's say you're a personal trainer and you straight up have to relocate. You don't want to be stuck in a position where you have to develop your whole clientele all over mm. at the mm. least liquidate a couple stocks. Um, know okay. what it's like to know different strategies in the stock market. Um, so you can control your own, um, your own Roth IRA and any type of investment vehicle, but also know how to make money in a downward market also. 
So understand the little tip tricks like shorting or um, covered calls. You mm. know, the, 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 puts and all that fun exactly, stuff. Exactly, exactly. There, you don't have to always have an upward moving economy in order to make money. And then also expand into the mindset. If you have a really good interest in real estate, understand that prices are going to go low. Um, there's going to be more uh, uh, real estate in probate. There's, you're going to have the opportunity to buy investment properties, make a good deal out of it, and then hold on to that and use that. And let's say you want to wholesale it, you can do that as well. But know all the different tactics in order to generate income when the economy is turning bad. And mm -hmm. you might as well start on now. It's, it'll take you a while to learn them. I yeah. love that because uh, just keeping money in the, in the bank account is not going to do anything for you. Exactly. So gonna, it's going to get spent. That's, Ex that's what... Exactly. So if your mindset is I'm going to increase my rates to a person, to, to my clients, you're going to be raising your rates for a client who's, cost, who's also experienced their cost of living going Absolutely. up too. And in our industry, paying for a personal trainer, that's discretionary. They don't have to do it. That's right. right. So, yeah. so you're you're going to be thing, the first one. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the you first line like, item to go when, so, exactly. when a recession hits. Yeah. So we could, we could be out of a job immediately. So it is yep. the best interest to protect yourself. That's right. So Nelson, real quick, what is, what's been the di most difficult thing for you in, in, in doing this business? In doing, uh, in, in terms of personal training or, or what I'm, or oh, what we can about. do personal training and, and, and the, the, the course and education mm -hmm. that you're, you're creating. Actually, it's kind of it's kind of both. One of the biggest challenges was uh, actually probably the biggest challenge is convincing people that this topic is important. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. easy to convince people who have the business mindset, who have right. the abundant mindset, and again, it's preaching to the choir, right? We all know the value of the dollar and how money works. Now, broadening that and getting people to see the value of uh, uh, of the dollar in education when all they see is cash and when all they see is cash equivalents, getting them to see the entire cash flow statement, getting them to expand their mindset, that's really hard. They're mm -hmm. so, they, I mean, and, and rightfully so, they spent years and years and years developing themselves professionally in terms of one specific skill set, which is the sciences. So trying to get them even interested in numbers in a different way, it could be confronting. It could be exhausting. It could be mind-numbingly boring. Um, but here and there, I'm starting to, to make um, a headway into people's mindsets that if you want money, study money. Um, yeah, I love that. that. I was going to be, I was going to ask, you know, how, how many more people are like, I'm good. I don't need that. Then people are like, hmm, this is interesting. I should pay attention. Yeah, so. a couple a couple of people when I first started, they gave me the courtesy nods. Yeah. Like, oh, right. good for you. And yeah, yeah right. I know it's important. Or and then I even get a couple of words like, Yeah, I know I really should be saving up for retirement. I don't understand how anything about finance works. And then they would go back to whatever they're doing. I said, Well, hey, you just said you don't yeah. understand how finance works, but yeah. you want more money. Um, there's gonna be a disconnect in what you just said. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Am so. I missing something here? Am I yeah, yeah. It's, uh, right. You're asking for help, but you don't want help. So. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So slowly but surely, as with any trend, as with any type of um, spreading the good word, it takes one person at a time. And I'm slowly making yeah. that way. People are reaching out via LinkedIn, um, and I got a couple messages via Facebook. So it, momentum is picking up. That's great. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd, do, I'd love to hear how it's going in a year. So, I mean, I, I think this is... That's a great opportunity for the young personal trainers and just really anybody, to be honest. I mean, uh, and it's smart that you've got it down to that group of personal trainers because I think mm -hmm. that's a great market. Yeah, you've niched down. Yeah, yep, I mean, yep, but yep. I think it'd be smart to take advantage of that. So that's awesome. Yep, yep. So, But Nelson, we're going to jump into our Moments of Truth segment here. It's the same okay. seven questions we ask all of our guests, and we're just okay. going to get rolling with the first one. Okay. Who is your success role model? My success role model, Robert, Robert Kiyosaki. Mm. Yeah, yeah, great dude. About him. Yeah, yep. love that. You have some, uh, you have some pro uh, investment properties and, and that whole thing as well? Not yet. I'm in the process of developing a corporation right now. Nice. And I'm going through, I'm going through the legal and the financial uh, um, processes in order to set up the uh, uh, entities in love order it. to do that. Wholesaling first, um, then um, leasing, lease options. Oh, nice. Okay. Very cool. Like first yeah, that's, sets. Mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, there's there's a lot of ways to make yeah. money in real tons estate. Of, you can get creative. Yeah. So, uh, what's your biggest success? Getting the book done. <laughs> how, how long did it take you? I bet that took uh, a while. 
it, it took about 10 months, but sitting on the idea took about, about a year. Wow. Okay. Having the discipline to go back and forth with my editor and trying to get my voice across. I mean, that was a lot of typing. <laughs> that had to be fulfilling once it was once it was done and you were holding the finished product in your hand. Oh, yeah. My first copy when I got it, yeah, I was kind of proud of that. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's, yeah. Be, that's a be. great feeling. Yep. So, now, so what's a typical day for you look like? I know before we started, you said you were up fairly early today. So, Oh, yeah. My first, I, my dog's waking me up by five. They're hungry. Uh, okay. I, I get to the gym around 6.30. My first class is around seven. I enter, that's the first gym. I go to a second gym. That's when I manage the programs. Um, once in a while, I get a free moment. I'll, I'll do some of my personal stuff. So I'll work on my business. Tell anyone that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then around the afternoon, I have to go manage a second gym. And then in the evenings, I'm over teaching classes for about three hours straight, um, about three, sometimes four classes back to back. Uh, depending on the evening, then I will train a client, just one client, and then I'm home around eight o'clock. I nice. am taking Spanish lessons, so I'm learning advanced level, but my tutoring is online. <laughs> so Very sometimes cool. I'll, I'll take a lesson. You're clearly finding more hours in the day than I am. So. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's funny. That's very cool. Oh, got a lot of coffee. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, what, what is your favorite quote? Um, I think uh, people say Nelson Mandela said this, and they also attribute it to someone else, like he attributed it to someone else when we read it. Um, our deepest fear is not that we are weak. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Ah. And I love that. So don't be afraid of, don't be afraid of how powerful you really are. You just mm -hmm. need to do it. Yeah, don't be afraid to be great. That's in a okay. movie too. What, what? It's the basketball movie. Yeah, I, I can't think of it, but it's it the. It goes around. It's it's. Anyways, I, I can't, I won't think of it. I'm not going to sit here and try to think of it. You're going to be, you're gonna be thinking yeah. about it all day though. Exactly. Um, but yeah, um, that's good. Now listen, what are some of your hobbies outside of personal training? Uh, I nap on the weekends. I had two I wonderful I labs and I love getting that rest time. Um, I do meditate two to three times a day, about 10 minutes each. Um, but oh, I love audiobooks. I have a goal to read about a hundred. 100 every year i'm at number 85 and i just finished the four hour work week i don't know nice. how it took me so long to get it and get great to this book. but yeah it's amazing tax-free wealth is another great one yep um uh, that's by the kiyosaki guy right yep um there's another mindset one i really really love her jen sincero you are a badass at making money um okay love her she she does a lot of the law of attraction but with money but she talks to you like you and her are talking over beers and oh, she's wow. just real i i love anything anything that's that's really cool mm -hmm. love that um what is where where am i brandon <laughs> hey, the best business but I, you start talking about some books that's probably why you threw will off a little bit oh but, sorry <laughs> oh yeah no, my no. bad i thought it well, hold on i thought of the movie it's coach carter <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I told you. I told you. Yeah, maybe that's what threw me off. Is I was yeah. I was deep in thought trying to think of the, <laughs> the movie there. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. So, what's the uh, what's the best business book you've read? I know you mentioned a couple that you you like, but the Cash Flow Quadrant. Cash Flow. Yeah, that just made money make sense, and it was practical. And I think anybody can pick it up and just like, oh yeah, I could I could totally see the benefits. I am mm -hmm. in the E quadrant. Oh, it's totally organized. Highly recommend it to everybody. Yeah, that and and, and Rich Dad Poor Dad completely oh, shifted my mindset. Yeah, I devoured those two books. Yeah, it, it was just such a stark shift in my mind from there. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. So mm -hmm. I completely agree. Uh, last question here. If there's one key piece of advice you could leave our listeners with about achieving success, what would it be? Start studying the topic about money in itself. Um, take a break from sales and marketing, take a break from whatever current education that you do have and start actually picking up education pieces about money, itself, mm. investment taxes, how it flows through the country, how it flows through the businesses, how it flows through you, but you have to understand money in and out and especially how it's created. Yeah, that's so good. Have you, have you read, um, not to keep, I mean, people are going to think we're, we like <laughs> work going, for Robert, <laughs> Robert Kiyosaki, Kiyosaki. <laughs> but um, now have you read the book? Have you read his new book called Fake? 
no, not yet. Oh, it's you incredible. Like it? Oh, it's, yeah. it blew my mind. It was, it was okay. like, it's, I, I mean, read rich dad, poor dad first. Yeah. Um, but fake is like a mind. It blows your yeah. mind. It's all about how, when they took the dollar off the gold standard, oh, inflation yeah. started going crazy. And it's yeah, he, he thinks the next recession is just going to be, it, it's going to be crazy. So, Oh, absolutely. The way that we're trending in the S and P, we yeah. have never been this high. Exactly. So That's, like we can't sustain this. Yeah. It, read that book. I highly recommend it. It's okay. good. So, All right. Yeah. So Nelson, how, how can our listeners get in contact with you? Where can they get the book name of the book again, websites, anything about you that sure. we can find you. Uh, come visit me at www.coachnellytoriano.com. Um, you'll have links to go to my blog, um, link to my Instagram, link to podcasts and all of that stuff. Um, email is info at coachnellitoriano.com. The book is called For the Fit of Poor Personal Trainer, a guide on how to trade your money, not muscle, to grow. It is available on Amazon in paperback, ebook, as well as audio. And I would love to hear from you. Join, join my email list. Um, I send my top money tips on a bi weekly basis. Love that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Nelson, we, we appreciate it. I, I, full supporter of you and what you're doing. I, I love the idea. I think it's, I think it's perfect. And yeah, it's really you know, valuable for yeah. sure. I awesome. appreciate you being on the show today. And like I said, we'll, we'll do a follow up in about a year to hear how many people are finding success through your, through your business. Yeah. So. And we'll do yes. another follow up once, once that your, your, uh, your thing is the standard and then yeah. people yes. have to do that. Yeah. yeah. I love I'll be that. excited to share with you. So, Thank but, you guys. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. But, and for our listeners, go, go follow Nelly. Um, just, yeah. He's the guy. He's the He's guy. So if you're a personal trainer and you're looking for some help, talk to him. Yep. Here's um, your guy. And, yeah. Here's your guy. And uh, subscribe to our show so that you're not missing any of our awesome episodes just like this one. And join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash wealth junkies. Again, Nelly, we appreciate you being on today. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Nelly. Awesome.